I'd like to hear their explanations. Welcome, Miss Lingsha. I am Preceptor Tauron. Greetings, my honored preceptor. It's been a while since we last touched base. I've brought a friend with me today. I believe you're already familiar with each other. Tauron. Elder Tauron? I remember when I was exiled, you were on the verge of passing on. <laughs> What's with this new look? <laughs> All of this is thanks to your past life. Had you not been so rash, I wouldn't have had to walk such a dangerous road to free our clan, becoming this specter of my former self. <sighs> Don Hung, you've returned twice, but it seems that meeting us fossils wasn't on your agenda. Regrettable indeed. Now here you are to meet me anyway. Life does love its ironies, doesn't it? I didn't come here with Miss Lingsha today to reminisce. Indeed. When the Cauldron Master extends an invitation, it's only proper for the Preceptors to attend. As the newly appointed Cauldron Master, there's been much to take care of within the Alchemy Commission. It's only now that I've had the chance to speak with you. Please forgive the delay, Elder. I sent over some evidence regarding the prison break in the Shackling Prison. I trust you've already looked it over. Yes. You sent us the remains of Mara struck soldiers, a map of the Shackling Prison, and a semblance reversion essence pill. These are the remains of assassins who used Cloud Hymn magic to conceal their tracks. They aided in the Borsons' escape, allowing them unimpeded passage through the Shackling Prison. That marked-up map is a map of prisoners' escape routes. Vidyadar, a craftsman, once made blueprints for the prison's construction, so I imagine, Mr. Tauran, you have a similar map in your possession. This pill... Is Semblance Reversion Essence? Indeed. I helped plot the prison break in the Shackling Prison. So, so the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus joining forces with the Lord Ravager to stir up trouble in the Alchemy Commission the introduction of the Stellaron and the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection all have something to do with the Vidyadara. That's right. Are you surprised? After all, both of you were sent here by the Seed of Divine Foresight as messengers to hear my confession, weren't you? Ever since the sedition of Imbibador Lune, the population of the Vidyadara has dwindled. With the High Elder exiled, a few of us preceptors had to do what we could to turn the tide. My methods might have been drastic, perhaps even incomprehensible. But it was all for one cause. The survival of the Vidyadara. Yet, the Sienjo natives zealously forbid any plague marks and did nothing while the Vidyadara suffered. Don Hung, Lingxia, as Vidyadara, you should understand the desperation behind my actions. All I've tried to do is to ensure our survival. I'm well aware of the challenges the Vidyadara face. Fighting for survival isn't a sin. But Elder, your actions have gone beyond mere survival. You've become a beast driven solely by the propagation, devoid of even a hint of empathy. <laughs> oh. Despite calling ourselves a noble draconic bloodline, at our core, we're merely bipedal beasts. The survival of our kind is paramount. If I hadn't resorted to beastly actions, the Vidyadara might not even exist. The sages show no mercy, as the old wisdom goes. When the High Elder abandoned our people's survival, I had to shoulder the world's sins alone. Lingsha, Don Hong. The past is behind us, but the future of the Vidyadara still lies within your grasp. The situation on the Sienjo Lawfu has changed rapidly. As Vidyadara, we must unite in purpose and avoid the mistakes of the previous Imbibitor Lune. 
I was initially skeptical about the Vidyadra's betrayal of the Alliance. But after hearing your confession, I realized that there is no point in talking about trust. Breaking the covenant of our Alliance will bring war upon the Vidyadra. Even if we are able to have offspring again, what difference will it make? Once my plan succeeds, the Alliance will see the Vidyadara as their saviors, because both parties ultimately share the same interests. <laughs> so now that survival won't convince us, you want to talk about interests? For a thousand years, the Alliance has been engaged in brutal warfare against the denizens of abundance, yet victory has remained beyond reach. Have you ever wondered why? Should the Alliance emerge victorious, they will inevitably become the next denizens of abundance. However, if they suffer defeat, the Alliance will face extinction. Thus, the Alliance has deceitfully upheld this precarious balance. However, I have a way to escape from this dilemma. The Alliance's path to salvation lies within the secret of Dragon Transmutation. Imagine if there were a way to transform other life forms into Vidyadara. The Alliance would then possess an endless stream of soldiers and would not need to worry about casualties. Once the war ended, these soldiers would cease reproduction, eliminating concerns of overpopulation. This is the way to salvation for the Sienjo Alliance, the ultimate path to end the universe's suffering under the Immortality Plague. Only we. The Vidyadara can achieve this. So, you relied on this rhetoric to manipulate the ignorant members of the Vidyadara into serving you. I am deeply disappointed in you, Elder. Your thoughts and intentions are completely devoid of empathy. Cloud Knights! Hold it! Miss Bailu! Mr. Dan Hung and Sister Ling Sha! Everyone's... here? You think I don't know why you're really here? Jing Yuan sent you here to test me, didn't he? According to the oath between the Alliance and the Vidyadara, it's forbidden to spill Vidyadara blood on their own territory. Are you all ready to violate this oath in the presence of the Law Fu's High Elder? Dragon Lady, there's no need to panic. Elder, the Vidyadara's sacred grounds and the High Elder are not to be used as pawns in exchange for your life. <laughs> you talk a big game. As if you have the nation and the people's best interests at heart. But when it really matters, you use a small girl as your shield. <laughs> it's ridiculously pitiful. <laughs> I've said it before. Survival is never a sin. We are all Vidyadara, so you should understand my intentions. And as a Vidyadara, I will leave for you a dignified solution. Leave the Scale Gorge waterscape immediately, and appeal to the top echelons of the Alliance. Let the Six Charioteers hold a trial, and sentence me to exuviation and rebirth. I see right through your plans, Mr. Tauron. Fityadara rebirth erases past crimes, but I'm well aware of the Preceptor's dirty tricks during rebirth. You might not be you. You will still be you. I won't forgive myself for past sins under the pretext of knowing nothing, nor will I allow you to evade accountability. <sighs> Don Hong, I've always disliked your inability to see the bigger picture. Rebirth hasn't changed you one bit. Miss Bailu, as High Elder of the Law Fu Fidyatara, Please share your thoughts at this moment. I... I don't want to stay here. I'm tired of being pushed around. I'm not some puppet to be controlled.
control. Please, take me away with you. I understand. As the oath dictates, members of the Alliance are forbidden from harming Vidyatara here. But I have long since severed ties with the Alliance. Right now, I'm simply a nameless, free to come and go as I please. The oath of the Xianzhou means nothing to the spear in my hand. Get them! Do whatever it takes! Make sure they don't need you. How about we dissipate that time to cleanse the filth? Wouldn't you agree? Joining the battle. Prime detonate. Eternal melody. Every petal in life will be swept away by the wind of time. The mood is set just let the show begin! Like fireflies, I will fight for myself until everything burns to ashes! This... Stay in step. Fight, fight! Your body and mind. Grace and elegance. Dragon Lady, are you all right? I'm... I'm fine. Thank you for rescuing me. You... You actually came here in person? Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to hear your lofty opinions. The public trial you seek with the Six Charioteers is inevitable. In addition, I'll write to the Seish Queller of the Fong Hu. With her hatred for evil, I'm sure she will make a just decision. If it's her, she will earn the respect and assent of all the Vidyadara on the La Fu. In terms of martial prowess, you indeed have the upper hand. But if you're under the impression that this advantage can be used to settle the score with us preceptors, that's quite an overestimation. Given the Vidyadara's foundation within the Alliance, do you really think you can do anything to us? As I mentioned, I'll take all the blame and become the scapegoat. With the secrets I possess, the interrogation alone will take an eternity. And in the end, through various exchanges of interest, I am certain to survive. You understand this better than anyone, as it's the very art of trade-offs you love to wield. <laughs> Lastly, a word of caution to you. I heard that Hule has escaped from prison and is headed directly for the Sky Splitter. The bloodshed at the War Dance is bound to be gruesome. Perhaps, even before my trial, your impeachment will have you in dire straits first. <laughs> Regrettably, Mr. Tauron, the Sky Splitter only hosted Cloud Knights today. No audience. And just moments ago, Hule was executed by the Cloud Knights.
only in the bathroom for a little bit, and you've already arranged my death? Hey, can't you play some normal games with Dragon Lady? Uh, you really can't keep your mouth shut, can you? All right, enough playing. It's time to visit my masters. The infirmary is right over there. You can go by yourselves. Oh, come back and visit me when you have time. Next time, let's not play overly realistic make-believe with this doofus, okay? Well, there's not much I could do. General Feishao didn't really give me any chance to shine during this wolf hunt operation. If I had been in the ring, I could have knocked down ten hulays with just one strike. You sound exactly like Master Yen Xing. But for now, both he and Yun Li have been forced to go to the Alchemy Commission for some well-needed rest. I'm the least accomplished in swordplay, but I came out unscathed. I really ought to thank my masters for taking all the blows on my behalf. Look who's here. The beloved Trailblazer and the charming March 7th. You came to the Alchemy Commission today. Oh, I get it. You are here with March to visit her masters, aren't you? Exactly. How are my masters doing at the moment? Unfortunately, only one master is here. I'm doing fine. Just following the doctor's advice. <laughs> Miss Bailu said I could take a stroll, so here I am. Your master Yenching wasn't as lucky. He's probably still in bed. Considering the intense battle with Hule, and then with General Feishao, <laughs> the rigorous boring session with her. His small body couldn't take it anymore. Master Yun Li, didn't you also engage in combat? <laughs> the little babies from the Lafu just don't have the resilience that us kids from the Juming have. I heard from Modza about the tough battle against the wolf troopers. <sighs> you fought alongside Modza. Did you get hurt? I heard a few versions of the story from the Cloud Knights who were there. The number of wolf troopers went from a few dozen to thousands. And the number keeps rising. It's becoming more absurd by the minute. Yun Li, go and lie down. Got it, Ling Sha. What about that smiley fox healer and the guy with the hood? <sighs> Thank goodness you and the others found Yao Cho. He lost a lot of blood and needs to rest properly. He and Maoza are seriously wounded. I've had to forcibly confine them to the Alchemy Commission. All three from the Aoqing are critically injured. But fortunately, the Xianzhou Laofu has a miraculous healer lady. It's a silver lining in this misfortune. Ah, oh, it looks like the entire delegation from the Xianzhou Yaoqing is gathered at the Alchemy Commission. Why don't we go see General Fei Xiao and bring her some fruit? I would normally say no, because they need to rest. But, alas, what can you do when the two of them have a leader who is just as restless? General Fei Xiao just slipped out of the recovery room. She thinks she's so sneaky, but I know everything that happens in the Alchemy Commission. If you're looking to meet her, the Lunarescent Deaths might be your best bet. I spotted her heading that way earlier. The sound of those footsteps... They must belong to General Feishao. Out and about, despite the doctor's orders. What a coincidence. Someone else who refuses to listen to the doctor's orders. Well, being a doctor myself, I don't think my knowledge of my own body is inferior to the Dragon Ladies. The healer does not heal himself. 
Don't try to act tough in front of me. <sighs> I'm sorry, Chao Chao. I didn't expect you to use poison that way. What a miscalculation. If only I'd found you sooner. If only I hadn't sent you to the Shackling prison. The way you're speaking, is this really the Fei Xiao I know? Or could it be a Borisan assassin? Imitating your voice to take my life. <sighs> Zhao Cho, your eyes. You can't see anymore, can you? I can still clearly hear the sound of the waves. That's enough for me. Don't blame yourself. You know what I'm more concerned about. Has your body had any changes since you swallowed the Crimson Moon? I'm not sure. There don't appear to be any changes. However, the many doubts that once plagued me have dissipated. I never thought I'd live to hear you discuss your health again. But thanks to Morza and that child, the price I've paid seems trivial compared to what we've achieved. I hold no grievances, Fei Xiao. I am content. I don't know how to offer words of comfort, nor do I know much about curing others' ailments. I am just a warrior, so my pledge to you is simple. An eye for an eye. So you were here too. In this vast universe, there's bound to be someone who can heal your eyes. I'll find them. But until then... The threat behind all this chaos needs to be dealt with. You must already have some ideas. Let them out. The resurgence of the Sanctus Medicus and the gathering of the Borisen are merely distractions orchestrated by an unseen force meant to divide the Alliance's attention. Unfortunately, they picked the wrong fight this time. Once we return to the Yao Qing, I'll personally lead the Verdant Knights into battle. I vow to take down a Lord Ravager and teach the Ruined Legion the true meaning of the hunt. <sighs> I knew it. You've always been so impatient. I apologize for my tardiness once again. The Alchemy Commission detained me for some time for a health examination. They released me only after ensuring I was in good condition. General, seeing you safe and sound puts our minds at ease. Ule's escape caused significant upheaval and forced the war dance to be put on hold. A truly unforeseen disaster. Fortunately, the younger generation showed their valor. They bravely tackled the crisis, putting an end to the disaster and providing a glimmer of hope in a dire situation. Before Master Diviner Fu Xuan's departure for the Yutre, I consulted with her about the war dance. She left a note stating, The hexagram oscillates between thunder and heaven, a sign of great power, assuring us that we would successfully navigate any challenges. She advised me to trust the younger generation's abilities and let them lead. Her predictions, it appears, have come true. It's just... 
the Sienjo Law Fu's long standing duty of keeping Hue imprisoned ended with his death on the Sky Splitter. This event is likely to bring much criticism from the Alliance's upper ranks. However, Hule's demise might actually be a blessing in disguise. Broadcasting this news could derail the Borison's resurgence and quash the ambitions of those who wish to take advantage of his return. Hand over Hule's remains to the Xianzhou Yao Qing, and I'll handle the explanations to the Alliance. But what about the war dance? While the Wolf Hunt mission was a success, the events on the Sky Splitter remain a secret. However, the news of the Borison's attacks on the streets will spread like wildfire. The war dance was interrupted, so it must be reconvened. As for the people who witnessed the attacks, beyond placating them, we also need to show them the Sienjo Cloud Knight's fearless dedication. On the war dance's opening day, Rogue Borison attempted to stir up panic, but was swiftly neutralized by the Merlin's Claw and the Cloud Knights. A genuine tale of heroism that will captivate and calm the public. As Elder Huayang suggests, the Law Fu will do its best to heal the wounded and compensate those who were affected. We aim to reopen the war dance in the coming weeks. This settles the immediate concerns on the Law Fu. My thoughts linger on the orchestrator behind these events. From the onset of the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis, the Xianzhou Law Fu has experienced numerous disturbances directly linked to the Lord Ravager Fantilia. Her attempt to infiltrate the Xianzhou with the Borison and sway the Law Fu preceptors to join the Sanctus Medicus' insurrection was unsuccessful. But I have a feeling that she is indifferent to the success of her plans. Rather than outright victory, Fentilia's motives seem to lie in breeding discord and chaos among allies. Should the Alliance fail to mend these rifts, it risks disintegrating into a pile of sand. The goal of the Xianzhou Alliance has not changed for thousands of years. Perhaps we should point the weapon in our hand toward this new adversary. I plan to bring this matter before the Marshal following the war dance. With Elder Huayang's insight, one wonders how the Marshal will react. Hmm. It's clear we're engaged in a game of chess not seen in thousands of Amber Eras. A game where even the strategists become pawns in battle where the stakes are as high as the fates of countless stars in the sky. <laughs> Predicting the Marshal's decision is beyond me, yet she's well aware of our concerns. She has tasked General Yao Guang with performing extrapolations day and night to gauge the situation comprehensively. We gather today not just to tackle the Law Fu's predicaments, but also to address a matter requiring our collective presence. Yao Guang has sent a message from the Xianzhou Yuchui, informing us that she wishes to share the results of recent calculations she made within the Matrix. Ching Yuin, I'd like to borrow the seat of Divine Foresight's chessboard for this purpose. Seer strategist thinking of us or thinking of the fates we're destined for? The Merlin's Claw, as blunt as always, though not everyone's cup of tea, huh? You once told Jin Yuan, you're lucky that I'm the one who came this time. If it were the Seer strategist, this conversation might not be so friendly. I'm intrigued. Did this conversation really come to pass? <laughs> I've never heard anyone mention that the Decalite reflection barrier could eavesdrop on even the quietest whispers. It appears that the Marshal sent not just two generals to the Lawfu, 
but an uninvited third guest as well. <laughs> oh, people have been saying that Mr. Jing Yuan's intellect shines as brightly as the seer strategists. <sighs> With the Lao Fu caught in such strife, the Yu Chui couldn't just stand by and watch. Seer strategist, our time with the Yellow Bell is limited. Let's get straight to the point. All right. Thanks to Mr. Jing Yuan, the interrogation of the two prisoners on the Yuchui has concluded. Mr. Jing Yuan's speculations were correct. Of the crimes they confessed to, planting a Stellaron on the La Fu was a complete fabrication meant to mislead. Their real aim? was to secure a meeting with the Marshal to present their Godslayer Protocol, a strategy they firmly believe in. And what was this grand strategy proposed by Jing Liu and that traveler? <sighs> the narrative they painted was vast and difficult to put into words. It all revolves around the coffin of the blonde traveler. To be precise, it's the remnants of the propagation. The remains of the swarm author? More accurately, it's a fragment of the divine body. In the future they depicted, this fragment serves as the final nail, sealing the fate of the plague's author and securing its doom. Before reaching that point, battling the gods necessitates a larger alliance. Hence, they sought out an ally for the Sianjo. I assume you've all heard of the famed Genius Society member number 81, Ron May, haven't you? The I of the Yu Chui has just seen this uninvited guest arrive on the Sianjo Lafu. Three, two, one. Right on time. Now, as for the best way to receive our distinguished guest, I'll leave that in your capable hands.